Join Magic Mike at Radio Care as you travel through the decades. Two hours of great tunes, lots of trivia and friendly banter. Hello and welcome to another Saturday night here on Radio Care and what has been the wettest couple of days that we've had in a long time actually. Well we've had so much rain in West Sussex since November. Uh, it's a wonder we haven't built an ark because um, I tell you, you know we haven't seen sort of rain like it. There's floods and everything happening all over the place. But what better way to start your Saturday evening if you're going out wherever you are in the UK or in the world. Um, but what a better way to start than to listen to Radio Care. And tonight's show is a show I've called My Misspent Youth. Now, this is uh, songs which um, influence me, influence my tastes and styles sort of in music, which later led on to me sort of um, forming a band and sort of joining other bands and sort of stuff like that. But sort of the type of music, my uh, youth culture, that type of thing. But also Alison's going to be sort of chipping in a bit later with some songs that um, have sort of relevance to her sort of uh, sort of formative sort of teenage years as well. So to get us started, this one is one from Buggles and it's Video Killed the Radio Star. Alison was just saying, what a good song to get started with. And I have to agree, it is a great song. That was one from Buggles, Video Killed the Radio Star, written by Trevor Horn. And um, we know later sort of knew that Trevor Horn sort of went on to sort of produce for a lot of the um, 80s bands um, that sort of came out. Uh, the song uh, made its debut on the UK singles charts in the top 40 at number 24 
on the issue dated 29th of September 1979. So 1979, I would have been 10. So I was quite young, I suppose, when I sort of like got into music and started noticing tunes and uh, different bands. And we, we all know, if you were in the UK, you used to watch Top of the Pops on a Thursday. And that's where you would sort of find out the latest songs that were going sort of like to the top of the charts or anything that was sort of newly released. So this next band is uh, another favourite of mine and another band that takes me back sort of um, to 1979. This is The Police and Walking on the Moon. Thank you. 
That one really does take us back. So that was Walking on the Moon by the Police. And uh, that was from their second studio album. And it was the second single uh, from the album Regatta de Blanc. And uh, the song was written by the band's uh, lead vocalist and bassist Sting. Went on to become the band's second number one hit single. So the next one is one from a favourite band of mine. Um, I've seen them twice in concert. Um, not at the time when they were sort of like first came out and really famous, but much later on I sort of seen them. Uh, and they're a great fun band sort of like to see live. This is Madness and this one is Night Boat to Cairo. fit as we used to be trying to do the old skanking dance sort of to that and just <laughs> absolutely knackering ourselves out in the process so that was night boat to cairo from um madness it was from their debut album one step beyond written by mike barson and suggs and included on their ep work rest and play wasn't that what they uh, the advert was for miles at the time do you remember that a miles a day helps you work, rest and play. You know, you don't remember that one. She's too young. She's pretending. She's pretending she's too young sort of for that one. Anyway, as I said, night boat to uh, Cairo. And I am reading earlier on that they actually got it from the Cockney rhyme and slang, uh, night boat to Cairo, meaning gyro. So they must have been on the rock and roll, being the doll, sort of at the time. There you have it. Full of useless information, but that's what this show's about. Good music, useless information and friendly banter. 
So this next one is one from the specials. This one is probably one of my favourites from the specials. This is a message to you, Rudy. tire of that song I can listen to that song over and over again and uh, still enjoy it just as much as I did the first time that was the specials doing their version of a message to you Rudy now originally um, recorded in 1967 as a rock steady song by Dandy Livingston and it was called um, uh, Rudy a message to you sort of um, back then and later achieved a broader success in 79 with the cover version which we've just played by the specials which reached number 10 on the UK singles charts and uh, the specials version also featured trombone uh, player um, Rico Rodriguez and um, Dick Cuffrell uh, played trumpets on that one and the producer on that um, particular track was none other than Elvis Costello. So welcome if you just joined us on uh, Radio Care tonight. We are playing the songs from my misspent youth. And by that I mean the songs that actually influenced me, influenced sort of uh, my styles, my fashions. Um, it's quite funny at the moment. Well, it's not funny really. I had a bit of a mishap. So I decided to cut my own hair and it's always fatal sometimes when you sort of get a bit cocky and you think, yeah, I've cut it plenty of times, cut it a bit short. So Alison thinks I look a bit like a skinhead. So it probably fits in with a lot of the um, songs that I'm playing um, at the moment. Um, but um, yeah, <laughs> don't cut your own hair, go to a barber's. Um, I I thought I was okay sort of doing it, but um, maybe I'll sort of um, get a bit of assistance next time. But the songs, like I say, influence sort of uh, my youth. Um, I was a sort of mod. I've always sort of liked the sort of mod sort of fashion um, and uh, sort of hung around sort of like with sort of friends that were sort of very sort of uh, much into that sort of scene, the mod scene, um, Scooter Boys, um, all of that sort of uh, back in the uh, 80s and uh, in the 90s. 
So this next one is one from a favourite of both mine and Alison's. It's Pretenders and this is a cracking one called Back on the Chain Gang. Radio Care is presented by DJ Magic Mike, broadcasting in the UK. If you like great music, you're in the right place. Absolutely, in the right place. If you're tuning in to Radio Care right now, you're listening to us. And we are in West Sussex. And it's not just DJ Magic Mike. We've also got Alison here who helps me put the sets together. And uh, we'll chip in and uh, join in so when she feels like it's sort of confident a bit later on and fancies out of uh, introducing a couple of songs. So that was The Pretenders and Back on the Chain Gang, written by Chrissy Hine and originally recorded by um, the band sort of The Pretenders and released as a single um, in September of 1982. Now, the song was released on the King of Comedy soundtrack. Now, that was a film, I'm sure, which included Jerry Lewis, probably one of his last sort of films that he sort of took part in. Um, and then they included it in their 1983 
um, next album, Learning to Crawl, which um, came out um, in um, January of 84. So recorded it at the end of 83. Um, back on a chain gang, entered the Billboard charts in the US um, in 1982, then reached number five. Um, and then on the Hot 100, became the band's biggest US hit. It also got a high number four on the Billboard Hot Mainstream Rock Tracks. And it got to number 17 on the UK Singles Charts. There you have it. Plenty of information um, to sort of get us uh, going with this show. So this next one is from a band that I really do like. In particular, Joe Strummer. I thought he was a great sort of front man and um, songwriter. This one is London Calling by The Clash. I forgot the end of that one. That was London's Calling by The Clash from 1979. And uh, one of my favourite ones, really, sort of uh, by them. Uh, released as the only single from um, the album they brought out that time. Reached number 11 on the charts in the UK in January of 1980. Becoming at once the band's biggest charting single until Should I Stay or Should I Go Now was a number one hit 10 years later. And um, the Radio 1 DJ Annie Nightingale um, made a bet with Joe Strummer that the London Calling would uh, make it to the top 10 without them appearing on top of the pops. And the stakes being a Cadillac, a brand new Cadillac, being the uh, soundtrack of the London Calling album. 
When the Oracle peaked at number 11, Nightingale was saved by a listener who donated a Cadillac that was then auctioned to raise funds for the recession hit steel town of Corby. See, they were, you know, these punks, they were sort of, I gave them a bad name at the time, but they'd done a lot for charity and sort of, uh, you know, uh, lots of these are sort of striking sort of uh, steel workers and miners and that sort of got a lot of support. And the fire service, like with the Sex Pistols, uh, when they were on strike, you had um, the Sex Pistols go and do the Christmas um, sort of party for the kids and everything. So they weren't such a a bad bunch. So this next one is one from uh, Blondie. Absolutely love Blondie. And this one is Hanging on the Telephone. Join Magic Mike at Radio Care as you travel through the decades. Two hours of great tunes, lots of trivia and friendly banter. Alison's having to resist uh, shaking the bells that we got sort of at Christmas time. She keeps picking them up and sort of like wanting to jingle them. Jingle the bells for everyone, but it's not the right time of year for that. That one was Hanging on the Telephone from Blondie. And uh, the song was actually written by someone called Jack Lee. Um, and I remember the story. He wrote the song. Um, it was recorded sort of as a demo on a tape, went to some sort of um, sort of, a, I don't know, A&R man who didn't sort of really pick up on it. Blondie got to hear it and she thought, yeah, I like that. And she um, sort of got to record it. Um, it was for a, a band called The Nerves. That's who sort of Jack uh, Lee, I think, was sort of part of in 1978. Um, but it was Blondie that had sort of like the hit with it. So this next one is one from one of my favourite um, bands um, from that era in the uh, late 70s and early 80s. This is uh, from the mod father himself, um, Paul Weller's band, The Jam. This is Going Underground. Some 
attention to relax me I'm too busy dodging through your facts You see, here's so what you get You've made your bed, you better lie in it You choose your leaders and place your trust As their lies will shut down and their promises lost You see kidney machines with paper rockets and guns And the public wants what the public gets But I don't give up the society wants I'm going on the ground Anthem that song is that was going underground by the jam from um, 1980 um, it wasn't actually released on an album until I think sort of the um, first best of album sort of uh, came out um, but it says going underground was uh, first of four number one uh, singles for the bands were to achieve um, through their career going underground was not released on any of the band's six uh, studio albums although it appeared on many compilations and reissues um, since the 80s the song was released as a double a side for dreams of children uh, which ain't a bad song sort of in itself really and um, it says that, um, going underground um, uh, gained a lot of sort of airplay um, on um, sort of the radio at the time and it covered uh, social issues at the time, such as political corruption, voters' apathy, and Thatcherism. There you have it. So, Alison, what have we got next coming up on Radio Care? The next song we have coming up, Mike, is Tom Hawk by the Piranhas. And I um, had to get you to put this one on the set because this reminds me of growing up, because my... Eldest brother Mark always used to love music like this, and I always remember him playing this song, and it's always stuck in my head. It's a great well, it's just reminded me what you were sort of saying because um, we had a sort of a message from uh, Mark and Lisa um, up in Sheffield who um, just want to say that um, they're enjoying listening to Radio Care on those cold sort of January evenings or any time really in January. But thank you for tuning in and sort of listening, and this one's for you, Tom Hark. Time. 
be there The whole thing's off I don't know why You have to laugh Or else you cry You have to live Or else you die You have to laugh Or else you cry Such a catchy tune, that one. That was Tom Hart by the Piranhas um, from 19... When was it? 1980. Now, the song um, was an instrumental from um, South Africa, originally written in the 50s, believed to have been composed um, by Jack Leroll. And the song was arranged for the Penny Whistle and first recorded by uh, Eliza and his zigzag jive flutes a South African band formed by Penny Whistlers. And they knew how to party then, didn't they? Um, Back in the 50s. In 1956, it was later released in the UK after it was used for the theme for a TV series. Reached number two on the UK charts in 1958. But this version was um, recorded by um, the Brighton-based band, The Piranhas, uh, who were a punk band and uh, covered by them in 1980. Um, and they used new lyrics uh, written by the frontman Boring Bob Grover. And the song peaked at number six on the UK singles charts and was the band's most success- successful single. Now, the Piranhas version was used as a background music on the Chris Evans show TFI Friday, if you remember that. So this next one is one from Dex's Midnight Runners. We heard this when we were sort of um, coming back sort of uh, yesterday in the van. We sort of listened to it. It came up and um, I've never really understand sort of uh, what Kevin Rowland sort of sings. Um, But you can pick out sort of certain words. This one is Gino.
Radio Care is presented by DJ Magic Mike, broadcasting in the UK. If you like great music, you're in the right place. You know, they're all anthems, them ones. I'm sort of listening to the songs and they're all anthems. They could be chants at football matches. They could be sort of sung. So when you had a few in the pub with your mates or whatever, they're all them type of sort of songs, aren't they? That was Dexas Midnight Runners and Gino from 1980 and written by Kevin Archer and Kevin Rowland. It was the band's second single and their first number one staying at the top of the singles charts for two weeks and it also charted at number two in Ireland. Now this next song uh, was by uh, a band I really did like at the time. It was Bad Manners and this should be my song because since moving down to West Sussex I have put on a stone and um, so this one's for me. This one is Lip Up Fatty. great song that was i just make myself laugh i was going to do a little video sort of to post on the uh facebook page and um seeing as i mentioned that i put on a stone Alison has kindly brought me in some cake that she made earlier on she's been busy today she has baked bread she has um made a lemon coconut um cake um it's lemon curd and coconut cake isn't it it is and that looks really really lovely and um, sort of trying out our new air fryer as well. Very posh one, actually. I know my sister's very jealous of it. Um, but, um, yeah, only the best. Anyway, <laughs> this next song is one from um, The Beat. And this one is Mirror in the Bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> 
take you to a restaurant that's got glass tables You can watch yourself while you are eating Scar band at the time, they were very sort of uh, different, weren't they, compared to um, the uh, specials and uh, selector. That was um, uh, <laughs> the beat and mirror in the bar from, from 1980 from their debut album, um, I Can't uh, Stop It. Reached number four on the UK singles charts and consequently their biggest uh, chart and success in the UK until 1983. Um, it was released on the very best of the beat um, when it was reissued as a single. And then the song was ranked number three amongst the top ten tracks of the year in 1980. Um, it does say a little bit of extra information on there that uh, Jerry Dammer, um, who is in the specials, that also started a two-tone label in Coventry, um, wanted to release uh, Mirror in the Bathroom by the Beat on uh, as a one of the first um, sort of two-tone uh, sort of uh, songs for the band uh, on the label but a two-toned parent company refused to allow them to release a single instead they released a scar version of um, te uh, Tears in Your Tears of a Clown um, when the uh, record was uh, successful the Beat formed their own label Go Feet Records and then they've released the Emma in the Bathroom and it was released in the April of 1980, reaching number four on the UK singles charts. So this next band, I played one earlier on from Madness. This is another one. Now, not necessarily my most favourite one, but it's sort of the connection. I lived in uh, Great Yarmouth for quite a lot of years and um, this was filmed at the Pleasure Beach um, on the seafront, which is still there. And Lee Thompson had connections with the town. Um, I think his auntie had a guest house there. Um, and um, yeah, and his sort of cousin sort of lived in that area. So this one is House of Fun. <laughs> Welcome to the house of fun, now I've come away 
Quite a catchy tune, isn't it? That was House of Fun from Madness from 1982. It reached number one on the UK singles chart, spending nine weeks in the charts. Song was re-released in 1992, where it reached number 40. It is the band's only number one uh, single in the UK, and in uh, 2015, the British public um, voted it the nation's eighth favourite 80s number one on the poll. For ITV. There you have it. Full of useless information. So this next one, what we got up next, Alison? So the next one is um, an Elvis Costello and one of my favourites, Oliver's Army. Great song. songs that I really love and um, yeah it's probably one of the favourites sort of that um, people used to play on the radio quite a lot um, if they were going to play an Elvis Costello one. Oliver's Army written by Elvis Costello and uh, performed by Elvis Costello and the Attractions which was his band from um, the third studio album Armed Forces which came out in 1979 the song um, was classed as a new wave track now new wave if anyone sort of, um, sort of listening from outside the UK and you're not too sort of familiar with uh, that type of music so new wave was that sort of music between the punk era and the new romantic sort of era of the uh, early uh, 80s 
Um, it was not really punk, um, but it still had a bit of an edge um, to it. And a lot of those punk bands became new wave bands or then sort of slotted into other sort of uh, styles of uh, music. But a great track. And it was covered many years later um, by um, Blur, um, along with sort of many other artists which have actually sort of done cover versions of it. Um, but some great songs, great songs from Elvis Costello, probably one of my um, sort of favourite ones um, from that era. So this next band is another band that I love. I've always been told that when I used to sort of sing in my band that I sounded like Glenn Tilbrook um, from The Squeeze. This one is Up The Junction. sung that one all the way through so we knew all the words and Alison just said that's got to be a good song if we still know the lyrics to it. That was Up the Junction from Squeeze from their third single release from the Squeeze second album um, Call for Cats sung by Glenn Tilbrook and one of the band's uh, most popular and well remembered songs especially in the UK. It reached number two on the UK singles charts and the same position as its uh, predecessor, Call for Cats, back in 1979. So this next one brings us back to the Coventry bass band. This one is a specials, and it is Ghost Town.
Was just like Coventry during Covid so there was no one around it was a ghost town at the time a bit of a spooky time you can go out on the streets and there was no one about a bit like Christmas Day used to be now you see everyone out on Christmas Day that was Ghost Town by the Specials and um, it was released in the June of 1981 the song spent three weeks at number one and ten weeks in total in the top 40 in the UK singles charts Song evokes themes of urban decay, deindustrialization, unemployment and violence in the inner cities. Now, if you think about it at the time, I think it's around about the time we had sort of like the Brixton riots. We had some riots in Bristol, Liverpool, Toxteth, all over the different parts of the country. And that was just sort of to do with political unrest and people not sort of feeling sort of settled, really. But, you know, it's, it's what they kind of wrote about, sort of how industries were disappearing and unemployment sort of was uh, growing. And that's how they sort of got it out. There was a lot of political bands at the time that did sort of write sort of things that were sort of they felt were happening to them. And it says the song was hailed by the contemporary UK music press as a major piece of popular social commentary. And all three of the major UK music magazines of the time awarded Ghost Town the accolade of single of the year for 1981 and the 12th best single of 81. Now, just sort of to mention, um, you know, a very sad sort of couple of weeks ago, Terry Hall sort of passed and, um, you know, a big loss, really, um, because he was the front man sort of in the specials and sort of with Fun Boy Free and uh, Colourfield as well. But um, also um, the other day, we sort of uh, we just sort of found out that Lisa Marie Presley um, had died at the age of 54 now. We played a song um, that Alison chose last week uh, with um, Lisa Marie sort of singing with her father Elvis and uh, yeah, kind of sort of spooky playing that and then sort of hear, hearing that sad news um, last week. So this one, this next one is one from the Boontown Rats and uh, this one is probably one of their most fav famous ones from 1979. This one is I Don't Like Mondays. Get 
Everybody's gonna go to school today. She's gonna make them stay at home. Daddy doesn't understand it. He always said she was good as gold. And he can see no reasons, 'cause there are no reasons. What reason do you need to be shown? Types do a waging world. A mother feels so shocked. Father's world is rocked, and the thoughts turn to their own little girl. Sweet sixteen ain't that peachy keen? Now I ain't so need to admit defeat. They can see no reasons 'cause there are no reasons. What reasons do you need? Oh, oh, oh tell me why. Is a real masterpiece, isn't it? I don't like Mondays by the Boontown Rats. Now, you one thing you can say about Bob Geldof, he is very much sort of um, moved by stuff that he sees on the news um, or reads sort of in the paper. And this is a particularly sad one as well. He, he wrote the song after sort of seeing the article about the 1979 Cleveland elementary school shooting in San Diego, um, which you probably gathered sort of like from the uh, song. And that, but um, yeah, and he released it on his album, third album, um, The Fine Art of Surfacing, which is a great album, but I prefer Tonic for the Troops, but can't take it away from this album. It is a brilliant album, sort of like to get. Uh, song written by Bob Geldof and keyboard player uh, Johnny Fingers, reached number one in the UK, reached number 73 on the US Billboard Hot 100. And in the UK, the song won the best pop song and outstanding British lyric category for the Ivor Novello Award. So this next one is one from a very young Adamant. This one is King of the Wild Frontier with his band The Ants. So Adam and the Ants, King of the Wild Frontier.
That was a rather loud one, wasn't it? By uh, uh, Adam and the Ants, Kings of the Wild Frontier, originally released in July 1980, peaked at number 48 on the UK singles charts. Following the breakthrough uh, success of Dog Eat Dog and Ant Music, which was at number four and number two, respectively. Kings of the World Frontier was re-released in February 81. This time it reached number two. So, Alison, what we got next on the show? Okay, the next one we have, Mike, is Pop Music by M. Pop. Everybody's talking pop, pop, pop music. music. Magic Mike at Radio Care as you travel through the decades. Two hours of great tunes, lots of trivia and friendly banter. We are still here and we're zipping through the show. Um, we've still got quite a few songs left to go, so we hope you're enjoying the um, the songs that we're playing tonight from the show, which I've called, what have I called the show. I've called it the songs from my misspent youth. Um, so I hope you're enjoying songs that influence me, my um, styles of music, fashion and everything. Um, sort of in my sort of pre-teens and throughout my teens. So this, that was um, pop music by uh, the music project called M, which was a British project, English musician Robin Scott, um, from the debut album New York, London, Paris, Music, Mu- music Munich, everybody talk about. Pop music. <laughs> the single first released in the UK in early 79 um, was bolstered by a music video directed by Brian Grant 
and uh, received uh, by critics. Um, the clip featured Scott as a DJ singing into a microphone and from behind an ener energetic turntable set, a times flanked with two female uh, models who sang and danced in a robotic manner. Video also featured Bridget uh, Novick, which was Scott's wife at the time, who provided the backing vocals on the track. Oh, that's a lot of information. Got to, um, let's have a look. The original cut appeared on the first UK and European release of the single, while a slightly remixed version were of the single released in the States and Canada. Pop music reached number one on the US Billboard Hot 100. Australian um, ARIA singles chart and number two in the UK. Now this next one I have played before and there's a few songs I have played on other shows sort of over the uh, sort of course of nearly two years. Radio Care has been going two years in February so it's gone sort of fairly quick but I have played this one before but I do like it. This one is by Strawberry Switchblade. This one is Since Yesterday. another one of them songs isn't it that's really nice sort of like to hear from time to time that was since yesterday from strawberry switchblade and uh, primarily written by rosie mcdowell and uh written during the early days of the band the song was initially called dance or dance as we say down here and uh, was uh debuted at their live show in 1981-82 time and the only recording of dance um, that survived is a David Jensen BBC session of the band in the October of 82. Now, after releasing their debut single, Tree, Trees and Flowers, an independent label, on an independent label, the duo um, were signed to Kovova, 
and um, a sub-label of Warner Music. Since yesterday was chosen as a group's debut single for that label in the October of 84. The song initially failed to become a success, entering the charts at number 89 in the UK. However, it slowly climbed the charts, although it was never to uh, break in the top 40 until the end of the year. After the Christmas period, um, decide, they decided to push it um, even further, more aggressively, and that probably meant they had to get out there and do a bit more. And it peaked at number 47, and then the TV adverts for the single were produced, and finally got it to, let's have a look, number 5 um, on the UK singles charts. It says, uh, internationally, the song peaked at number 6 in Ireland, 24 in the Netherlands, and was released around uh, continental Europe, Australia and Canada. Um, but it failed to chart. The uh, song um, was also a, a big hit in Japan, where the group found the biggest fan base. Blimey, a lot of information on that one. So this next one is one for all those charming men out there. This one is one by the Smiths, and it's This Charming Man. And that was this charming man from the Smiths from 1983, recorded on the independent label Rough Trade, um, defined by Johnny Marr's uh, jangle pop guitar riff, which he was very sort of uh, familiar sort of uh, hearing that sort of through the Smiths songs. Song peaked at number 25 on the UK singles charts. Now this next one is one from The Cure. It's actually not one of their favourite ones. Um, they don't actually like to play this one live, although they normally end up having to play it live because people start shouting it out. But this one uh, became sort of a, a very sort of commercially successful song for such an indie band. This is Love Cats by The Cure. Oh, we couldn't get 
bigger and slicker and wider and brighter We bite and scratch and scream all night Let's go and throw all the songs we know Into the sea, you and me All the years and no one home I'll show you in spring It's a treacherous thing we miss You miss Love cats We miss From the October of 1983, it was released uh, as a standalone single. It was the band's first top 10 uh, hit in the UK and um, peaking at number 7, also reached number 6 on the Australian charts in early 84. Now the single later appeared on the compilation album Japanese Whispers. Um, It does say released in December of 83. So this next one is one from the Scottish band, The Water Boys, and this one, initially released in 1985, um, was um, The Hole of the Moon. Present. 
to remember with this song that it actually finishes sort of very suddenly at the end that was Hole of a Moon by the Waterboys and the song was initially as I mentioned earlier released in 1985 um, from their album um, This Is The Sea um, it is a classic of a band's repertoire and uh, has uh, been consistently played at live shows ever since now, the single was not a big success when initially released in 85, only making it to the lower end of the charts, although it reached number 12 in the Australian charts. Subsequently, it became one of the Waterboys' best-known songs and their most commercially successful. It was an Ivan Novella Award winner for the best song musically and lyrically in 1991. Upon its re-release in the March of 91, it reached number three on the UK singles charts. Now, this next band is uh, a band called the Jesus Mary Chain, and that I really liked this particular album. Um, I had a couple of their albums, but this was probably my favourite album. It was from the album called um, The Darklands in 1987, and this song is called April Skies. <laughs>
just a reminder not to smack myself in the face with the headphones because it really hurts. That was April Sky from Jesus and Mary Chain from 1987. As I mentioned earlier on the Darklands album, reached number eight on the UK singles charts, number six in Ireland and number 16 in New Zealand, making it the band's highest charting single in all three countries. Now, this next song is one. This is probably the third time I've played it. Um, in the course of the nearly two years that I've been running sort of our set up uh, Radio Care. And um, as I've mentioned several times before, this is from one of my favourite artists, female artists. This is from Kate Bush. And it's had a real journey, this song. Uh, initially released on, in August of 85 on the Hounds of Love album. Um, and now it says that upon the original release, uh, Running Up That Hill reached number three on the UK singles charts and number 30 on the US uh, Billboard Hot 100. Now, in 2000, actually in 1987, um, it was then sort of played again sort of at the Secret Policeman's third ball um, with Pink Floyd guitarist Dave Gilmore, who actually discovered Kate Bush. In 2014, um, Kate Bush performed it for the first time in many years in her Before the Dawn concert at the Hammersmith Apollo. And then um, it does say back in 2012 for the Summer Olympics, it was actually remixed uh, then. So the UK uh, top 10 for one week at number six then. But it wasn't until 2022, last summer, that the Netflix TV series Stranger Things actually got it into um, the charts again. And it was uh, um, number one on the UK singles charts for three weeks. Ireland for seven weeks, Australia for nine weeks, and the song reached a new peak of number three on the US Billboard Hot 100. So here we have Kate Bush and Running Up That Hill. Feel 
We both say, and we're sat there listening to that, thinking, running up the road, running up that hill. We wish we could, but we don't think our legs would let us do that. That was the lovely Kate Bush, and I gave you all the information before the song, but that was uh, from the Hounds of Love album from 1985. So just to remind you, listeners, um, we've, we've asked a bit of a favour of you. Alison's asked it sort of on her Facebook page. I've actually asked it on the Radio Care page. But we've noticed that, you know, there's plenty of people downloading and listening around the world, but you're not actually liking the, uh, the actual show. So if you go on to Spreaker... Um, and you see a little little heart on there, click on the heart. Or the thumbs up. Or the thumbs up. If you're going on to Spotify, wherever you're listening to us, whether it's Amazon, whether it's Apple, whether it's YouTube, whichever one it is, just like it or give us the thumbs, thumbs up. up. And it only takes a second. Absolutely. It only takes a second. And, you know, that's going to do us some sort of uh, sort of favours. It seems you're liking the shows because there's plenty of people downloading all over the world. We have got listeners in all over the UK, in the States, in India, in Germany, in Australia, in Chile, in Israel. Um, where else have we got them? In Barbados. <laughs> Um, in China in China we have got people everywhere that's listening so I think we've got people on Mars that are listening to us at the moment um, but they just need to give us a like or a thumbs up so please 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 go on there and do that if you want us to keep doing the shows do that and even check out the Patreon page because you know we do this for nothing and it does cost us a bit of money to put this show together as much as we love it we want to keep it going and hopefully if you want us to keep it going help us uh, achieve this so this next one is one from the stranglers this one is one of my all-time favorites from them from 1982 this one is golden brown like sun lays me down with my mind she runs throughout the night no need to fight never a frown with golden brown every time just like the last on her ship tied to the mast two distant lands takes both my hands Never a frown with golden brown Golden brown, fine attemptress She's heading west From far away Stays for a day Never a frown With golden brown
What a great song that one is. That was Golden Brown from The Stranglers from 1982. Noted for the distinctive harpsichord instrumentation, it was the second single uh, release uh, from their studio album La Folly and uh, peaked at number two on the UK singles charts, the band's highest ever place in the charts. Also, um, has uh, been recorded many times by many other artists. I can't think of any other artists that have recorded it. So before we finish with the last song, um, we just want to thank you all for sort of tuning in. Those that do sort of tune in to the live shows um, wherever you are in the world. I know we have our listeners in the UK and you know who you are. There's probably lots of names um, too many to mention, but also our listeners across the pond in the States, in Australia, New Zealand, and um, everywhere else you, where you tune in. We really appreciate that you take the time to, to listen to us. But please, as I mentioned, do the thumbs up or the heart just to let us know that you really do like us because, you know, we enjoy putting the shows together uh, and it would just sort of uh, mean so much to you, to us. So before we finish, so the last song we're going to play um, is one from the band Deacon Blue. This song is called Dignity. Um, I think it's a great song. Originally came out, I think, on their eight, one of their albums in the 80s, uh, Rain Town from 1987. Um, and then it was sort of reissued uh, a little bit later on. But it is one of their great sort of uh, songs. So all that is left for us to say um, on Radio Care is so long. Farewell, a vida sin. No, is that not the wrong? Is that the wrong one I'm doing? Don't be doing that. Is that the wrong show? Oh, it's because we're watching the sound of music. All that is left for us to say here at Radio Care is. Ta-ra! Ta-ra. See you next week. Ta ra. There's a man I meet Walks up our street He's a worker for the council Has been 20 years And he takes no lip of nobody And litter off the gutter Puts it in the back And never thinks to mutter And he packs his lunch in the sun That's back The children call him boogie He never lets off But I know cause he once told me He let me know a secret about the money in his kitty He's gonna buy a dinghy Gonna call her Dignity And I'll sail her up the west coast Through villages and towns I'll be on the holidays They'll be doing the rounds They'll ask me how I got her I'll say I saved my money they say, isn't she pretty that she called dinner And I'm telling this story in a faraway sea Sipping down Rocky and reading me in our keys And I'm thinking about home and all that that means and a place in the winter for dignity And I'll sail up the west coast Through villages and towns I'll be on my holidays They'll be doing the rounds They'll ask me how I got a house I save my money I say, isn't she pretty? That ship called the
Radio Care is presented by DJ Magic Mike, broadcasting in the UK. If you like great music, you're in the right place.